2020. You know, sir? Good, how you doing? Good, man. Well, you got a, a, a quick turnaround, uh, which, you know, it's been tough for some people to, to get fights, and you're getting to do it quickly. Was that prepared for you? I mean, were you pushing for it right away? Did it, did it just kind of fall together? How did, how did it all come together? Well, I, I want to have a busy uh, year this year, especially the way I finished off uh, in November last year. I want to go 3-0 this year. Uh, took a little late start. We were supposed to fight in March, then April, then it turned out May. Quick turnaround puts me right back on schedule, and uh, that's it. I'm happy to have a big opportunity here, main event. Dan Ige got the green light from my manager, and we took it. We jumped. I was going to ask you about the matchup. I mean, he said himself he appreciates you taking it because he knows you're a little further up the ranks. So when they gave you that name, was there hesitation to go, ah, oh, we're trying to go up, not down? What, what, was the, what was the talk? Main event, Fight Island, hesitation? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I dig it. What would you think about him? I mean, like I said, I know you've been eyeing the top of the division. Had you been watching his run? I mean, he's had an impressive win streak. Were you watching him at all? Were you familiar with him? Yeah, he's a tough kid. I mean, he's done what he had to do the last six guys. Um, you know, I think we're similar in the fact that we've, been, we've both been overlooked uh, most of our career. And here we are, main event, Fight Island. So um, I'm just not like the last six guys he's fought. I won't overlook him. He's got my full attention. And come Wednesday, uh, we're going to take him out. We were talking to him while I was kind of wondering if he might be coming in with a chip on his shoulder, just kind of being the, the perennial underdog despite what he's doing. Is that is that what you're expecting? But it sounds like you kind of feel the same yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, that's it, man. But, you know, uh, I've been talking that chip on my shoulder talk since I made my debut. And, uh, you know, here we are, another big moment opportunity. But now I plan to go and capitalize. Unique time in, in the history of the sport as far as, you know, the way the fights are, the way the training is. Anything you took out of that last fight, whether it be the preparation, whether it be the fight itself that you said, Here's, here's some changes we got to make, or here's at least what I can expect. Happened organically. It just I think we all made changes through this pandemic. You know, I think it's just being more uh, self-dependent and, and reliant on the things you can control. And, and obviously, it's a little bit more tight-knit now. Um, but that's where I think the best things happen. I don't think you need these big gyms to make things happen. we got a small core group of guys that, um, that just put in the work every day, and we're expecting the results. Nice. Did you have your eye on the uh, title fight the other night in your division? I'm sure you were watching. What, what were your thoughts on that yeah. fight? Yeah, I thought it was a great fight. I thought Max really showed a lot of heart coming out in that first, second round. And, um, you know, thought he could have got it done in the third as well. I thought he controlled the cage the whole fight. And if the scoring was a little differently, uh, you know, maybe his uh, score is one full round. Um, you know, maybe he gets the nod. Yeah. I was going to ask you because... I think people, you know, there's there's a lot of big names at the top, right? But they're not they're not fighting a lot. You're you know? damn I mean, right. They're all talking. Yeah. So so what do you think? I mean, I don't want to say title shot next, but I mean, as you said, headliner, you know, main event. You're wanting to stay busy where these guys aren't. Are you thinking about wh where you where this puts you? Well, Danny has my full attention. A win over him puts me in that mix where you know, if you want to fight, man, you got to stay busy. And, and if it's one thing I showed, it's that. All right, so I say for me. What kind of fight are you expecting here? Because I think on paper this looks like it could be a, a heck of a scrap. Is this, is this going to be a battle? Are you going to go dominate? What, what's going to happen here? Um, you know, everyone thought the, the last one was going to be a, a scrap too, you know, and, and uh, I dominated there. Let's we'll see how it plays out, man. Dan's a tough kid. You know, he comes from a great camp, and uh, I'm going to go out and just do what I do, and I expect to finish. Going back to the title fight on Saturday, did you personally have a score for Holloway or for Volkanovski? To, to give, I saw it once, you know, to, to, it was that close. I feel like i got to watch it again. But I was a little taken back by the decision. I thought Max might have done enough. Uh, you know, just where he controlled the cage the whole fight. And, and I don't think the takedowns landed up to, you know, it was very minimal. They were quick. He got right back up. Um, but who, what do I know? I'm not a judge or a ref, you know. Is it one of those ones where Holloway, like, won the fight, but Volkanovski won the match by the rules? Yeah, you know, I, I think I just think that the scoring was a little different. You know, I think uh, Dana had mentioned that he was a little upset with it, so maybe that makes him revisit the scoring. So maybe ultimately, in the long run, it might serve a bigger purpose. So who knows? Do you see anything of yourself in Danny again? I feel like this guy coming up, he's a, he's I, a good scrapper. I just think that was similar in the fact that uh, we're hungry and we want to go out and make a name for ourselves, and uh, I think we have to both have the opportunity to do that Wednesday. You mentioned that the guys at the top of the division are just talking. Are you talking about Ortega, Korean Zombie, and stuff like that? Why do you think you're lucky in the fact that you get to fight during a pandemic where these guys might be abroad or whatever, that you're getting to put your name further and further up those rankings while these guys are going to eventually stagnate? Yeah, but well, I think they all have the opportunity to fight on fight line as, as well, right? Yeah. So, I mean, if they want to fight, they can. Um, I, I was fortunate to have the opportunity in, uh, in, in Jacksonville. 
but that was pushed back from March and um, you know just just doing what I just focusing on things I can control man that's my effort in the gym every day uh, being prepared for these big moment opportunities so when they come up I can sign that contract Speaking on the side of Bryce Terry, did you, you, you mentioned how the third round was, was really close. Do you think that open scoring would have made the, the, the fight different? I, I, I think it's definitely not a, a perfect system at this point. So, you know, um, I'd like to see live scoring as well. Just so this way at the end, you're not all up on arms about what the hell happened. You can kind of just follow the script a little bit would be nice. But what do I know, man? Like I said, I, I, I just go out and compete. And um, I, I know it's not, it's not a perfect system at this point. But hopefully they continue to tighten up and just try to make these adjustments as, you know, we've all seen bad decisions. But not to say that was it. I've seen way worse. <laughs> I'm wrong, but I think you're a gym owner, right? Uh, I, I own a promotion in uh, Manchester, New Hampshire. I used to fight for it. Okay. Uh, how did it got, a, got affected by the pandemic? That was the first show I've ever had to cancel. Uh, I took pride in, you know, never cancel an event, really just sticking shows out for the fighters. And uh, we, just like everybody else, man, we had to cancel our events. Uh, we don't, you know, host events um, on TV or anything like that. We're a local promotion, but... All the more reason why I have respect for what Dane was able to pull off because I know it wasn't easy. Are you planning on doing events now? Or I'm really possible? excited to get that local scene back off, off the ground and running, man, because these guys, they don't have the opportunity I have in front of me to go fight for uh, the UFC, which is doing the unthinkable right now, hosting events. So um, I, I'm really excited to go back home and tackle that and just get these next guys busy so they can have the opportunities I have in front of me. Are you watching everything the UFC is doing here to maybe try to, to mimic there? Yeah, man, on uh, Smoke and Mirrors, man, yeah, as much as I can. I don't got the budget that the UFC got, but, I mean, even down to the little things, man, the green room, any, like, little things I could do, um, it, it, the UFC doesn't, you know, cut any corners with it, and uh, I try to do the things that I can on a local scene, definitely. And just prepare them for, for what it's like. You know, we don't got a, a room full of press and things, but just how to act and, and – and hold themselves and just being professional even just something is down to get your contracts in your medicals do the basics you know you don't want to lose a fight over paperwork and some of these guys at a local level need to hear that hey man. so um, there was a show just when the pandemic was shutting the world down really there was a show in uh, london that got pulled from the indigo the o2 and replaced with an empty warehouse in manchester and i was reporting and watching it and i felt a little bit naughty just watching it at the time with the Jacksonville shows, maybe it was a hangover from Hitachi Palace. There seemed that people seem to have a perception that that might have had an element of naughtiness to it as well. Did you ever feel that participating and being one of the first people bringing sports back? Well, through those types of you know setbacks and. and where nobody wants to do it. That, that's where sometimes the biggest opportunities are, you know. So, like you said, we had the whole world watching. There was no sports, and uh, here we are now. That their NBA is kind of a little behind the eight ball, and everybody else is kind of behind the eight ball because they didn't, you know, hit the ground running when these things happen. But um, I understand where where the mindset was, but it, it takes uh, balls, and Dan apparently got big ones to do what he did, and and it's paying dividends now. Well, before this, I think he did a great job at the Apex as well. I think the Apex was run real smoothly. There was no in-cage interviews. The commentating was pushed back from the from the cage side. And um, little things like that, I thought he did a great job uh, at the Apex and really being able to have a control the variables a little bit more in your home court, you know. But now here we are in Abu Dhabi, and um, I think the government really stepped up too and helped out big time. And uh, this is the best, I think, that they've done to, to date. How have you been out of quarantine? Well, it has been great. The first 48 was tough, you know, that especially at that long plane ride and then all the testing. It's been a lot, but uh, you got to commend the testing and the safety first. Um, they preach it and they're backing it up. And then getting out of the hotel after the 48-hour um, quarantine was nice, just getting out and seeing a little bit of Yaz Island. I mean, trying to experience as much as I can while we're out here, while also reminding that this is a business trip and we got a job to do come Wednesday. Same as business. No, I did that last week. I made sure to get that out of my system quick. <laughs> that, that was fun, man. We did that. And I even got to jump on a jet ski for a little bit. Just have a little fun. Um, the journey's a destination. You know, like I was saying, what cool, what, how cool is Fight Island if you're just looking at the damn hotel all day, you know? So getting out there a little bit, enjoying the process, and uh, now it's all business. Which car were you in? 
I was in the the two fastest with the ones that didn't have the tops. I don't know the names, but one was a drifter and uh, and one was for speed. So got the best of both worlds. Nice. Good luck Thursday morning. Thank you. Cool. All set. Yeah, yeah. All right. Thank you guys. Yeah.